it's your boy laid back welcome back to my channel hey two things we gotta do you gotta hit that subscribe button i'm drinking this water you already know what it is hey elevate more in 2024 elevate more in 2024 man that's the new motto happy new year to everybody man and it's only right that we start out with a scary video you know what i mean it's only right but we got three only fans horror stories animated I don't know what to expect, man, but look, if you with me, I need you to drop with you in the comments. That's for all my real ones, though. Happy New Year to all my real ones. Let's go ahead and get it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. Let's go. It was the summer of last year, and I was a broke college student. My parents were happy to help with paying for the education. That don't sound like this person, obviously, but let's go. But... My university was in an urban and rather upscale area. So despite the fact that most of my tuition was covered, I was still struggling to get by living costs. Food, clothes, and utilities were all very expensive. I worked long and hard hours at a local coffee shop as a barista, but this was starting to interfere with my education. I majored in biotechnology, which was a very difficult and competitive field of study at my school. The classes I had to take were extremely difficult and time consuming. Mm. Sometimes I would stay up for several days to get. Look at the professor. Why the professor look like that? Yo, that is crazy. What school is that? Either in order to balance out studying, attending lectures, and going to work. But hey, someone had to pay for bus passes, and someone had to pay for my groceries. I didn't want to have to sacrifice my grades and future career opportunities solely due to the fact that I needed money right now. The worst part of all this was that I barely had a life of my own. With midterms coming up and finals a few weeks after that, hanging out with friends or just having fun in general really wasn't an option. Right. I needed to make a lot of money fast and quick, something I could preferably do in the comfort of my own dorm. My mind immediately went to online jobs, but none of them seemed legitimate. Most of them required little time, but they obviously paid a little money. Mm. I asked an upperclassman friend of mine and she suggested a couple things. At first, we were thinking of getting... Yo, they look stressed out. Look. They stressed and tired as hell. Is that how school be making people... I wasn't... That wasn't... School wasn't my thing. Y'all let me know for the people that actually... This how y'all be looking in college, bro. Getting a sugar daddy, but that requires sometimes meeting those creepy old men in person, which I wasn't a huge fan of. But then my friend suggested selling a bit more revealing photos of myself online. She claimed that she and many other people she knew had done it loads of times and you don't even need to show your face or that much of your body. People just pay ridiculous amounts of money even for slightly lewd photos. And considering that my roommate had just moved out with her boyfriend, mm -hmm. I figured that this might be my best option. I had this room all to myself and there was really no <laughs> harm in doing this at this point. I immediately signed up as an OnlyFans creator. OnlyFans seemed to be the most credible and popular of these types of websites. They also seem to be the safest and are very liberal with how much profit the creators get to keep. Pretty much every other girl on my campus has one in their Instagram bio anyway, so I figured there's really no harm in trying and have too many other options anyways. It was a lot easier than I thought getting started. Rather young woman and I considered myself to have a decent body. I saved up for a cheap but effective ring light off Amazon and my smartphone had a good enough camera anyways. I started out by taking a profile picture. Nothing above my chin was shown. It was me posing all cute with only my underwear on. I bought a promotion from a rather large Twitter page for my OnlyFans and it seemed to be working. I had already gotten a few subscribers and fans. I wasn't in the top 1% or anything but my initial investments in the light and promotion were all paid off within a few days. Mm. I even took the following week off of work. I eventually went ahead and took the next few weeks of work off. Hold on, hold on. She, she took the few weeks off. She about to start going in and producing high level content for OnlyFans. She wasn't playing. I wanted to study for my midterms and at this point OnlyFans seemed to be playing the bills pretty well. My audience seemed to be a mixture of mostly men, both old and young. But one day, as I was messaging a few fans, I noticed a DM request with an unusually high payment amount. Sure, a lot of these guys had their own weird kinks and would pay a surprising amount of money just to see my feet sometimes, but this was even stranger. I got a direct message from someone with the username John underscore Doe, and he was willing to pay $100 just for a photo of me smiling. I initially thought he had added an extra zero by accident, so I messaged him back just to make sure that he resends the request with the right amount. 
but the man was serious. He wanted to see a photo of me smiling for a hundred dollars. I took a nah. selfie immediately and sent it to him. He paid the amount in full. We kept messaging back and forth. He wanted to see a video of my full body from the neck down. I did, and he paid about fifty dollars. He wanted to see a photo of my hands, and I sent those to him as well. After paying unusually high amounts for rather weird photos, he proceeded to ask rather deep and odd questions. Started with things like, how old are you and are you single? And transitioned to much creepier things like, how many partners have you had in the past? Are you living with family? Do you live alone? Why is she not looking at this as something that's a red flag? Like, what? I mean, I get that you desperate for money, but... Oh, hell no! Let's proceed. Are you sexually active as of now? I got extremely weirded out by this, but I didn't want to be rude to the man. After all, he is a really big tipper. But eventually, the man started asking questions like, what STDs do I have? What? And at this point, I just quit the chat. I continued with my night and went to sleep not thinking much of it. Hell there are plenty of weirdos online and this man could have just been another one of them. That next day, I had just gotten home from class. The bus was a bit late and so was I. I opened up my laptop in order to start my night job, if you will. I noticed my OnlyFans had a series of unread messages from John underscore Doe, the same weirdo from last night. Oh, I was hesitant to open them at first, but I did. It was a series of manic, crazy messages. What? It started off with him offering large sums of money just to talk to me, and then it transitioned to him getting very aggressive and making threats to track me down and attack What? I will pay you 1000 for a feet photo. Bitch, answer me. What the F is wrong with you? Why have you- what? Please come back, I hate you ho, I will murder you and do it- what? Alright, 2004 feet? Hold on man, what? Let's see how she responded to this. Act me just because I ignored him. I had finally had enough. I reported the man to OnlyFans and blocked him. No amount of money was worth his attention, and I eventually just called it a night. I never heard back from John underscore Doe those next few days. Things went on considerably normal until one afternoon. It was around 4 p.m. and I was in my apartment. I was in the kitchen and I needed some fresh air so oh, I went outside shit. my balcony to take a few deep breaths. But as I surveyed around the view, I noticed one of my neighbors on their balcony. This obviously wasn't particularly weird but I noticed he was staring right at my building. It was an old man looking at me in a somewhat intense or anxious manner. Whoa. I waved to him as a friendly gesture but received no reply. Hell no. That's weird, I thought, but then things got even weirder. The man pulled out a pair of binoculars and what? stared at me, and then proceeded to scan up and down my building with his binoculars. I was extremely unsettled by this. It was like he was looking for someone. Could it be me? Why would this man be spying on me? I went back inside and tried to shake it off, but then it hit me. John underscore Doe from the last night. Could this be the man leaving me those messages? Oh, Could that shit. creepy OnlyFans man be living right across from me? Whoa. I knew I didn't have any time to waste and I immediately reported him to my building. Mm. My building security said that they talked to the man and couldn't find any significant enough evidence that the man was doing anything wrong. They even tried telling the police as well but they dropped the case because, well, they had nothing to report on either. Damn. I was very irritated by this, but I never saw the man peeping at me anymore so I figured he got the message. But one day, I was walking back from a grocery trip. I was only a couple blocks away from my apartment building and it was mid-evening. It was getting a bit dark but there were street lights and my apartment complex was in a rather nice area. Deep down, I knew this was a dumb decision to make cause I was a young woman but hell, I just wanted some food. But as hell I was no. walking I felt watched. I got this weird sense that there were a pair of eyes glued onto me as I was walking down the street. Come on, the man. stairs in my apartment building were only a few blocks away but as I got more and more creeped out. The distance seemed to get longer and longer. Suddenly surveyed my surroundings and noticed the old man across the street. Eyes locked onto me. What? I couldn't believe it. The man was back at it. I started trying to walk a little faster and heard footsteps behind me. The quicker my footsteps got, the quicker oh, the old man's did as well. At this point, it was a speed walking race with the old man and I. At that point I started sprinting. I wasn't the fastest runner in the world but I was much younger than the man. I right. could hopefully outpace him quickly darted around a corner and stood there and waited. I was behind a bus stop and essentially was hiding for my life at this point. I knew I had to try going directly to the police this time but 
I needed to get to my apartment or to safety first. Yeah. Who knew what this man would do to me, especially considering he was the one leaving those crazy messages on my OnlyFans. Mm. But to my surprise, a young man noticed me. You okay, ma'am? The man asked. The man was around my age, only a tad bit older maybe. He was casually dressed and quite good looking. Yeah, it's just the man following you, he interrupted. What? I, I don't know what to do. I'm scared he'll step out and find me, I said. Hey, don't worry. I can walk you to your apartment, if that makes you feel a bit better, oh, the man said. Shit. I was a bit sketched out at first, obviously, but I accepted the offer. I was afraid for my life at this point and any help I could get was worth it. The Damn. man seemed like a gentleman and he genuinely wanted to walk me to my apartment building. We chatted a bit about our lives as we were walking and he didn't really say much about his. The young man went by Jay and he seemed to be a really nice guy. But as we were getting to my apartment building, there was an old van in the driveway that was never usually there. Oh, I had no idea shit. what this random new vehicle was doing in our neighborhood at that time of day, but I just focused on getting to my door. But that's when I heard yelling behind me. Wait! Wait! It was- Oh. So the old guy was actually trying to protect her from this guy. That's what I'm thinking. The old man from before and he was running after me, trying to get my attention. But before I could even react or comprehend what was going on, I felt Jay's hand latch onto my shoulders. He threw me into the oddly placed van. Oh. I didn't even have time to scream or react. He slammed the door shut and quickly started driving off. Oh. I tried my hardest to scream for help and get out of the van, but the back had no windows or access to the front seat. What? It was all padded down with wooden panels. I couldn't believe it. Jay was John underscore Doe. Oh my Jay God. was the one following me. But what did that mean for the old man? My thought was interrupted by the van coming to a sudden halt. Jay quickly yanked open the back door. The look in his eyes were completely different from when he walked me home. Oh, he had shit. this crazed look on his face, almost like he was a different person altogether. He yanked me out of the van after taping my mouth shut and blindfolding me. What? Jay was pretty tall and I'm not exactly the strongest person in the world so I couldn't even resist. He dragged me into a building. I had no idea where I was and I was freaking out. As he left me in what seemed to be a basement, he started telling me all the awful things he'd do to me and how I shouldn't have ignored him on OnlyFans. Oh. He walked away and I sat there for what could have been only a few minutes, but felt like hours. I had given up all hope. Was this really it? Was this how my life was going to end? Damn. My entire life was flashing back before my eyes. But suddenly, I heard sirens outside. Could it really be the police? Was it just an ambulance or fire truck passing by? Mm. Soon, I heard a loud yelling and pounding on the front door followed by, Police search warrant! Step out with your hands above your head! Mm. There was a long, intense pause, followed by more commotion. After several minutes of rustling and more yelling upstairs, my blindfold and tape were removed from my mouth. Damn. It was an officer. They took me to the police station and asked me some questions about Jay. I explained to them Great. the entirety of the OnlyFans situation and showed them screenshots. It turns out the man was mentally ill but was somehow released from the asylum. I asked the police how what? they found me and they explained everything. It turns oh, out man. the old man I suspected from before was actually trying to help me. Mm. According to the police, Jay had somehow managed to track my IP address through OnlyFans and found out where I lived. Dang. He happened to live pretty close by to me and CCTV footage showed Jay coming to my apartment and analyzing my path home from the same van. Whoa. The old man was looking through binoculars because he wanted to know why there was a random new vehicle in the neighborhood and what it was doing by my building. Mm. It turns out he was following me that day in order to make sure I went home safe. Wow. He was very, very suspicious of Jay in the van. He was suspecting that Jay would somehow do something to me, but by the time he actually found out, it was too late. Damn. The old man was the one who got the van's plate number on camera Shout and reported to him, it to the man. police immediately. Shout out to him. The police used traffic cameras and records in order to find out where the van was going and where it could end up. As mm. soon as I got home, I explained to my friends what happened and I deleted my entire OnlyFans account right after that. Damn. I soon went back to work at my cafe and tried to resume my normal life. It's been about a year since that happened and the old man moved out since. He's now at a senior care center nearby mm. and while we rarely are in contact, we never ever mentioned Jay or the incident. Mm. Man, shout out to that old dude, man. Shout out to that old dude because he was trying to save her life and he did. That is crazy. That's crazy. For context, I'm a 20 year old man. My name is Jack. But this horror story I'm going to tell you didn't happen to me. 
It happened to a close friend of mine. Her name's Cecilia. We met on the integration meeting after our first day of college. I was pretty new to the area. I just moved from another city and I was excited to attend my dream college. Get the best education I can and a good degree in my field. I had just moved here and all of my friends were in my hometown. I decided to make a new friend with this beautiful woman with a friendly face and say hi. Cecilia was gorgeous and probably one of the sweetest people I've ever met. She had big beautiful blue eyes and glamorous skin. She really stood out from the crowd and to me glowed like an angel. I knew that she was someone special. I mean hell that's why she stuck out so much and I approached her. Something about her when I first met her indicated to me that we would share a lot of amazing moments in life. I knew that she was someone special just initially meeting her. So when I approached her and greeted her, it was a real pleasure. It turns out that she was new and rather lonely here as well. She was from a different state and was actually looking for a new friend herself. Figuring we had the same intentions, I invited her out for coffee that day. After that, I decided to figure we had the same intentions. That was a key sentence right there. I decided to go and talk with the rest of the freshmen from the meeting. I met a lot of my future friends that day, people who I still keep in contact with today. From that day forward, Cecilia and my relationship skyrocketed. We sat together during lectures, had lunch together, we FaceTimed each other almost every other day and gossiped harmlessly about our classmates. Oh, like we that? truly were best friends. Unfortunately, things started going downhill after that. I myself was fortunate to have parents who financially supported me every step of the way. I could rent an apartment and buy everything I needed for a student's life with ease. But Cecilia had no financial support. She had to help herself. She worked a not so fun job at McDonald's and the hours were grueling and long. This was starting to interfere with her education and she had trouble studying. This really wasn't working out for her so she started looking for smaller sort of side hustles online. She asked me for some advice or tips but I didn't know what to tell her. Hell, I hadn't worked a day in my life. Wow. What was I gonna tell her? One day, Cecilia came across a website called OnlyFans. It was a pretty new and highly trending website. I didn't know much about the website aside from the fact that it was known for adult content and pretty much every other Twitch streamer or Instagram girl had one in their bio. One day, she explained to me the nature of the website over FaceTime. She explained to me that she could make hundreds or even thousands of dollars just posing half naked online. Men were thirsty enough to just drop money on this stuff. She said she could finally be financially independent without even having to do any work. She didn't even have to show more intimate parts of her body and could make hundreds of fetishists who just want to see her hands or feet. She was blown away by the easy money and was eager to start an OnlyFans account. From that day I warned her that it was a bad idea. It sounded like a dream side job at first and sounded like really good easy money but something was too good to be true. I told her that the whole idea of showing her face and body to a bunch of weirdos and creeps online could only be dangerous. You never know what their real intentions are behind a screen. That's real. She didn't seem to pay any mind to my concerns. She thought it was her easy way out of this problem. She truly didn't mind showing her body online if there was a monetary reward. Mm. I couldn't believe it. She really was this desperate. We got into a small argument. I was about to say desperation leads to error. Or can lead to error. I ain't gonna say it does every time. But desperation can lead to error. But I backed out. I realized I couldn't change your mind and let it be. She signed up for an account and started posting photos shortly after that. After a while, she told me that it was the best decision in her life. She told me she made triple the amount she made at McDonald's and barely had to put in any effort. She could actually focus on school and had spare time now. After she told me that a few men paid her thousands of dollars for some fully naked photos, I was very uncomfortable. Look at his face. <laughs> He like, what the fuck happened to you? I explained to her once again that this whole thing will backfire when some psychopath meets her, but she ignored my advice as usual. Mm. It bothered me. I personally felt that your body should be reserved for the one you love, the one who cares about you, the one who's there for you. But in the end of the day, it was her body and her life. Yeah. None of my business. Yeah. But the next few weeks, everything seemed to be going back to normal. But one day something horrible happened. Normally, we would meet each other in the morning before classes, but she didn't show up. Mm. That's weird. I checked my phone and she didn't let me know. This was even weirder. Normally, she'd text me, 
I was surprised, but didn't think much of it. I decided to go on with the rest of my day. Damn. The day went by and I still didn't see her. She didn't join me at lunch or sit next to me during class. Mm. When I checked my phone that night, I noticed that she hadn't even been online since yesterday. Two days went by and I started to get phone calls from her family and close friends. Wow. They wanted to know where she could possibly be. She literally disappeared from the face of the earth. Wow. Her mom eventually called the police and reported her as a missing person, and the search begun. Mm. For a few days, the police asked everyone around her, including me, about where they saw her the last time. But after a few more days of searching and still no trace of her, the police asked for volunteers to help them. Me and several of her other friends decided to join in on the search. Damn. Armed with flashlights, we all checked through the local forest. It was exhausting. We searched up and down and still didn't find a single trace of her or her body. At Jeez. this point, her parents were devastated. They were already crying. They mm. knew that after this much time of someone being missing, the chances of survival were really, really low. Jeez. The police finally got a warrant to search through her apartment. But when they looked through there, they saw no traces of any violence or that anything could have happened. Nothing was touched. They expected a fight scene or some broken plates or a messed up bed. But mm. this didn't add up. If she was abducted, there would be some traces or some sign. Right. But no, the detectives found the apartment clean. The only lead they could find was an open OnlyFans page with her photos on it. They assumed that this was the doing of one of her followers, maybe. The police looked through her laptop thoroughly, but they still found nothing. Wow. Her messages and her subscribers revealed no information. Even their best investigator had no clue where she was. Wow. There was no trace of her or whether she was even alive. There were no suspects and no witnesses. What? The police and the volunteers searched for her for about another month. This they did everything they could. They searched for her for another month? What happened to this lady? They hung flyers, posted her on social media. Still, she wasn't found. The police eventually closed the case. Her family and friends Whoa. were devastated. I considered myself lucky and let out a sigh of relief. Why My plan like succeeded and I was happy about that. It was a great idea. I left her body in the basement of an abandoned farmhouse about a hundred miles from the city. Nobody even suspected me because I was playing along as a victim, a good friend who only wanted the best for her. I told her not to use OnlyFans, but she wouldn't listen to me. I couldn't let anyone aside from me watch her body. I hated what? the idea of these creepy old men seeing her. I hated seeing those photos online. She could only be mine, and mine alone. Maybe if she weren't so stubborn and listened to my advice, she would have lived. We were meant for each other. We would look perfect together. But she just treated me like a friend. I'm perfectly fine with what I did. I don't regret it. Whoa. Are these true stories or what? That was insane i would have never thought that but it was kind of weird when he was like at the beginning like when he was on facetime with his legs kicked up in the back anyway that was crazy that was crazy y'all need to let me know in the comments which story we got one more left which story was the craziest let's go Whoa. I want to start off the story by letting you guys know, I in no way consider myself a hero of some sort. I feel what I did was completely necessary and needed no validation or praise. Any marginally decent human being would have done the same thing if they were in my shoes. The story took place several months ago, and it's still very fresh in my memory. Mm. It was late November, and my quarantine boredom had taken its peak. We had been at home for almost a year at that point and my county went on its second full lockdown after another spike in cases. I'm a young man and let's just say being indoors all day really brought out certain urges in me. The girl I'd been initially seeing had cut things off and my sex life was put to a halt. Sure, I had work and a cat to take care of, chores to do, but I can speak for all of us when I say that most of us are pretty riled up in isolation. I found myself scrolling through social media one morning and stumbled across a very attractive girl. She had a little less than 8,000 followers on Instagram and about 3,000 on Twitter. Her name was Anna and she was unbelievably beautiful. She seemed to be gaining a small bit of traction online. After stalking her socials a bit and finding the link tree in her- This dude said after stalking. 
What the hell is going on, man? Her bio. I found out she has an OnlyFans. Now, normally I don't spend money on this kind of stuff. There's plenty of lewd material online for free and I had never found a girl on OnlyFans intriguing enough for me to drop the first month subscription. But Anna was my type and, most importantly, I was bored and horny. I figured if there was a time to say hell with it and try out a website like this, it would be now. So there I was, reluctantly entering my credit card information into OnlyFans. The subscription fee was around $10 a month, 7 for new subscribers. Not that bad if I'm being honest. Now, this was my first time using OnlyFans, but I had to say, I was pleased with what I got. To put it simply, there were a few more exclusive photos of Anna on the front page. I enjoyed scrolling through them a bit. A few days passed by and I still was occasionally looking at her OnlyFans page. After all, I paid for the whole month anyways. It actually felt quite nice supporting Anna financially. Her house always seemed dark and dingy. Something about where she was filming made me feel that she wasn't in the best financial situation. I mean, after all, she was on OnlyFans. I eventually discovered the DM or request feature and decided to have a go at it. The page had what seemed to be a chat room, similar to an Instagram direct message. It allowed the subscriber to communicate directly with the OnlyFans creator and request certain content and photos. One night, I was even more bored than usual and felt I had a dollar or two to spare. I logged into my OnlyFans and opened up the direct messages feature. I said hi to Anna and got a response a few minutes later. It was a photo of her holding two fingers somewhat sideways over her mouth, seemingly a cute gesture for hello. I didn't immediately feel like asking her to send certain photos, so I tried to have a bit of small talk with her. She dodged almost every single question. Her age, where she's from, the only response I got back was how she's doing. A meager great was what she texted back. It was a bit sketchy, but I eventually dropped the idea of trying to get to know her. After all, she probably has a bunch of men like me in her DMs. How was I special? I made a few photo requests and they were a few dollars to unlock. A seductive pic here and another there. After a few picture exchanges, I decided to call it a night. But before I closed the tab, however, I decided to take another scroll up the page. You know, enjoy the pictures I paid for of this gorgeous woman. But as I scrolled up, I started noticing the flirty hand symbols she was throwing up. They weren't your usual peace signs. They were something familiar. I looked a bit closer and longer, and that's when it clicked. It was American Sign Language. My younger sister grew up deaf, so my family and I pretty much had to learn ASL in order to communicate with my sister. I took a look at the hand symbols she was making, the first one being the weird sideways peace sign. It was H. The next one, which I thought was her trying to imitate a cat pawing or purring, seemed to be an E. After that, there was one of her holding what seemed to be an L symbol over her head. The last one was with her three fingers seductively running up her arm. The fingers made a P sign in ASL. The images in that order spelled, Help. I couldn't believe it. I thought these were weird hand symbols and were just some odd form of flirting or play, but it was a cry for help. Jeez. What was happening? Why was she sending an SOS to me? Why not law enforcement? I immediately responded back, Anna, are you okay? Do you need my help? What's happening? I frantically sent. She responded with a video of her discreetly making the gesture in ASL that asks, Do you know sign? I responded with yes and asked her where she was. She responded with a video of her signing back, don't know. My mind was racing. What was happening? Was this some sort of sick joke or prank? I asked her if she knew roughly what city she was in or what locality, and she responded, no, don't know. I immediately called the police. I let them know everything that happened, and they identified the girl as Layla Ronson. She was a college student, who the university had initially thought dropped out due to her lack of attendance for months. She seemed to be doing OnlyFans against her own will under the name Anna. The police used the OnlyFans URL and managed to track the IP of where the videos and messages were coming from. It seemed to be a rather affluent housing complex a few hours away from me, in my same state. The police in that area managed to track down the house and rescue Layla, as well as make all the needed arrests. According to the investigators on the scene, Anna was kidnapped not too long ago from her university. She was held captive and made to make OnlyFans and other online content against her will in the basement of one of the houses. Mm. The man who kidnapped her would take all of the money made from the process and continue the cycle. 
I got a phone call from Layla herself a few days later, thanking me for helping her. She said the man who kidnapped her said if he caught her asking for help online, he would harm or kill her. Jeez. He would occasionally peer over from the corner of the basement to see what exactly she was doing and made sure she wasn't asking for anyone's help over OnlyFans. Mm. I haven't spoke with Anna since, and I deleted my OnlyFans account soon after the incident. I simply didn't want to ever think about that website again. Mm. This memory is not something I relish. That was crazy. Um, If you made it to the end, drop real one. Out of all three stories, what was the craziest one that you heard? For me, it's still story number two. He killed the girl? Are these real stories or what? This stuff is crazy. Be careful, be careful, be careful, man. Y'all wanted me to check out more stories and stuff like that. More scary, creepy horror stories. That was crazy. What was the craziest story that you heard in this one? Till next time, self-love and positivity, Fire Squad. I got you and you know it. Hey, yo.